So folding to us on the button a lot here, uh, I am gonna take this opportunity to open this hand, um, but it's gonna be important to realize we might end up in this dynamic a lot button versus blinds potentially. Could just be card distribution for everybody else, um, but it'll be interesting to see how these guys in the blinds start fighting back since obviously both are very capable of doing so, but for now I'm gonna stick with the same open size and uh, continue with the plan. 30. Might have reached my breaking point. Might just three bet with only looking at one. I think that's what we're gonna do. Oh, I got a good hand though, so. Uh, so being 200 big blinds deeper, uh, deep, I'm gonna go a little bit bigger than I normally would, so uh, I'm gonna go to 150. 130. So um, button open, small line three bet. These ranges are gonna be as wide as it gets besides blind on blind for opens and re-raises. So my four bet range is gonna be a little bit wider by default. Like the front of the gun opened, I would, when I three bet and they four bet me, I'd be pretty scared. But here are some hands that seem like they would be full, it would actually be four bets. Most of them being like suited Broadway hands, like King Queen suited, Ace 10 suited, Ace Jack and stuff like that would be cold fours. And sometimes some Ace wheels, but this one's just an easy fold. Not shocked to see this developing. Um, obviously, Trevor could be waking up with a hand here, but he could also be trying to uh, sort of set the tone that he's not just gonna let me open the button and continue folding all the time. The hand that I have right now, I would not typically put in a normal four bet construction, but his five X sizing feels a little bit like he's going for a fold more. Could just be a standard, but uh, I have a hand that's sort of like okay to start stepping out of bounds with, and I do like starting to set up a dynamic where I'm gonna be four betting when he three bets me, not just auto folding. And my hand definitely functions better as a four bet than as a call. He made it 150. I'm going to, I think go around two and a half X. So it's gonna be 375. Uh, I'm gonna have a pretty easy all-in here. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna choose any other sizing, uh, especially with the hand that I have and being button versus small blind. Um, not really much else to say uh, other than I, I, my first three bet I thought was gonna be light, but obviously I have it here, so uh, we're just gonna go, go with it all in. All in. All right, nothing really to talk about here. I'm not gonna be calling off of this hand. Um, so I wouldn't say there's any one particular opponent that I'm, I'm looking forward to playing. I'm just kind of interested to see what the dynamics are, are gonna be like. I think it's gonna be more of a, a relaxed atmosphere, I guess. We're all kind of vlogging and, and enjoying the process of that. Most of the time that I'm playing in games, I'm playing with no one who's actually trying. Everyone is gonna be really trying during this. So they're going to be fighting for every pot and that's going to be a little bit different uh, as far as what I'm used to in the games that I'm used to playing. Uh, Suited King here on the button will be an open for me. Nope. All right. Well, big blind versus button range. I think this hand suited is an easy three bet. Uh, I really don't know how to play these wheel aces post slot because I feel like they just miss so often. So uh, this should be, I don't know. We're gonna three bet this because uh, I don't know. Just wanna take it down post or pre, I mean, and then make our lives easy if he folds, but uh, maybe a little bit more difficult if he does call and see a flop, but we'll just cross that road when we get there. 120. 120. Uh, so versus three bet here, at 100 big blinds, easy fold. I think with a suited king here, I can defend uh, profitably in position. So I'm gonna call. All right, so comfortable belt, 
in terms of how comfortable I am right now, not great, but uh, that's a good hand. I mean, good, decent flop. I mean, I should have stronger queen highs in range, I guess. And we do have a gutter, so having the ace of diamonds don't really, I don't know. I mean, I guess we have a draw and we're just gonna start bluffing and repping some sort of strength because uh, that's where my head's at right now. So 240 and uh, we don't really have to bet super large. So we'll just go a little bit more than one thirds and go with 95, which that looks like 95, 95, 90, there we go. Very good flop for him. Um, not a good flop for me, obviously, I don't have any equity. Um, so I'll have an easy fold here, but uh, yeah, just this is gonna be very advantageous to his range and I obviously don't have any backdoor equity, so. Premium six handed, so I'm gonna take my standard sizing. Nothing changes. Uh, with pairs here versus I'm gonna open, can mix between folding and flatting. Uh, I'm gonna get in there and uh, start flatting this one here. Okay, um, Johnny's open from the low jack, it's going to be pretty tight ranges. And this small blind call, or cutoff call, sorry, is going to be a lot of pairs that don't want a three bet because getting four bet and getting four bet is quite annoying. And then some suited cards that you want to take flops with, and uh, hands that probably aren't going to be back raising us. Uh, this hand's just a fold, but yeah, that's it. Obviously, this board is gonna favor my range here, opening from under the gun. Obviously, I have all of the sets here, even have some queen jacks. Trevor can definitely have some queen jacks here, but his hand is going to be pretty weak fairly often here. I don't wanna get overly tricky here. I think that it's fine to just put in a bet here. I don't need to go very big. I have the queen of hearts in my hand. So I'll just throw out a small bet, knowing that can't really mess around too often here. Definitely a spot where I could, pending run out, get three streets too. So I don't wanna limit any amount of money that I can get in this hand. So we're gonna go ahead and bet for a small sizing. Uh, this flop is gonna be good for Johnny's range under the gun. He's gonna have a lot of the stronger hands that I won't have. Um, and obviously my hand here is pretty handcuffed. Can't really do much against a bet, um, but just fold. It will be interesting on the headphone situation because I actually never listen to music when I play poker. I'm very social, so I like to hang out and talk to people and there's gonna be none of that today. It's just gonna be me alone with my thoughts. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the noise canceling on and not listen to music at all and just get real zen with it. We'll see how that goes. Uh, it'll be a good opportunity to practice meditation while at the poker table. Once again, we're on the button and we're gonna be opening. Any ace high should be good enough to open. 30. Uh, so definitely can three bet here. Um, like I said before, not gonna be too much flatting. And uh, definitely a good hand throw in there. 125. Uh, queen 10 off suit at first glance is obviously a fold, but given that Rampage has opened 100% uh, of buttons and Marley definitely could be exploiting his uh, looseness on the button and her perceived tightness from the small blind, I could turn this Broadway into a four bet bluff here and get away with a considerable amount of time uh, it's definitely 
folding is the is the uh, the book play, but sometimes you just want to go against the books, you know. <laughs> We're gonna toss this one into the muck. Uh, so this is one of the issues we run into when this is our third button in the row that we open. Uh, just seems like if we just open fold all the time, seems really exploitable. But the, that's just one of the issues when you play against solid players, which is something I'm kind of unfamiliar with. But uh, yeah, this is just too weak to defend. Uh, don't really have a pan for, plan for post flop. She can do this with just such a high number of hands that we are probably ahead of. We're probably ahead of right now, but it just we just have too many issues to run into post flop. I feel like if we call this, so uh, we're gonna let this go and hopefully find a better spot. This ain't aces. Some shit talking on it. Definitely gonna be opening a lot of buttons, but not king three off suit. This one's going in the muck. All right, so this is the first time it's folded uh, to the blinds, I believe. Certainly the first time it's folded to us in the blinds, so. I haven't actually given that much thought to how I'm going to approach this. I don't play a lot of blind versus blind in my cash games. So uh, I think I'm going to go for a raise or fold strategy to start just to keep it simple for myself and go for a little bit of a larger size. This hand obviously fits in that range. Uh, so I'm going to go 4x to 40. 40? Uh, okay, so first is small blind open. Uh, we'll definitely be playing lots of hands here from the big blind. Obviously, wake up with another good hand, so I'm going to be putting in 3-bet and uh, a little bit smaller than I did the last time against him because I was out of position in that hand. Uh, so this time we'll be going to 130. 130. So again, uh, not too surprised with uh, Trevor on my left here to see this dynamic developing, although he likely just had it in the pre-flop confrontation we had earlier. Uh, this hand is a little different than the previous hand in that um, I'm suited, I have a better kicker, so just the raw playability of the hand uh, allows me to play it as a call if I want. I also think that since I just 4-bet folded, it might not be the best moment to use this type of hand as a 4-bet. Uh, so I'm not going to fold, I am going to continue with a call. Uh, I'm just going to be checking range on this board. Set. Uh, very good flop for my hand and range. Uh, the only hands I should be concerned about that he has are hands like King Queen and King Ten, uh, maybe pocket nines. Uh, but aside from that, going to uh, be pretty far ahead of his hands, uh, and we'll be betting at a high frequency on this board for a small sizing. Uh, so with two six in the pot, I will be betting uh, about a third pot. Uh, so I'll bet eighty. Baby. So his sizing makes sense on this board. Uh, he does have an advantage range on range, and it's also reasonably dry in the sense that there's not so many turn cards that can like change the very strong hands that are available. Um, I also have a hand that has basically, you know, some value through ace high, backdoor potential with diamonds, and uh, against the size, I do have to find a lot of continues, so this one I think functions pretty well and should be fine as a call since I will at least at some small frequency navigate to showdown and have the best hand. Call. Uh, so I don't really see any need to lead this card with any part of my range, so I'm still going to be checking to the aggressor here. Uh, turn ace is 
slightly concerning because a lot of his calls in the flop are going to be ace-high hands. Uh, and this is a spot where now at this point I'm going to be really far ahead of most of his hands if he has some 9x hands uh, or some smaller pocket pairs. And then I'm way behind the ace-x and if he has a hand like king-10 or king-queen. Uh, obviously he could also have king-jack but I block that. Um, so I'll be checking this turn and then I'll value bet river if he checks me. Uh, if he bets river then I'll have a decision uh, once we get there. So this action is pretty interesting. Um, the board still favors him on this turn, but he decides to slow down. I think this would tend to weight him a little bit toward showdown value type holdings, things like queens, jacks, tens, uh, maybe hands like eights or nine x if those are in range. Um, he might slow down with a hand like queen, jack, jack, ten, but I sort of don't think so. I think he still has a big enough advantage he would keep betting. Uh, also, the turn is a second spade on board, so there are some spades combos he would probably keep betting that he chose not to uh, if he has them. So I think we can eliminate a lot of like the very strongest holdings, although it's certainly possible that he could check a hand as good as pocket aces or ace king, being worried that he just blocks way too many of the okay hands. Um, on this board, I think his advantage is still big enough that I don't want to bet like my in-between value hands and potentially risk getting raised off, uh, not or not just period, not knowing what to do. Uh, so in this spot, I think I'm just going to check to check call any sort of reasonable size. Uh, maybe if you went for some massive over bet, I would consider folding, but uh, pretty much checking to check call here. Uh, so versus check here, trying to decide whether I should value bet or not. Um, I think he's going to have some so he could have some queen 10 that could find a call. Um, it's going to be hard for me to be bluffing too often here when I bet flop, check turn, and then bet river. I do think that I have the best hand enough here uh, that I can go for some thin value um, and just try to get looked up by a 10x hand or maybe induce a bluff from some weaker hand. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bet something very small and then decide based on what he does. 105. So his small size here would typically indicate that he doesn't want to polarize, so he's probably allowing himself the opportunity to value bet with some of the sort of weaker hands in range. So when he bets this way, he's not limited to, you know, king x or better for value, anything of that nature. Uh, he can easily be betting ace queen, ace jack for value this way. Definitely puts um, my exact hand in a sort of weird spot, but he should find bluffs at the sizing as well. Um, I, I will lose this hand pretty often, but because of the price he's giving me, I just basically still have to stick with the plan and, and call. I really do think the, the biggest value of playing though is just being forced to talk through your thought process and really not bullshit yourself about what you know what you're able to apply because a lot of times people you know they understand a lot of poker concepts but they aren't necessarily applying them well and i'm no different i, I think there's uh, a lot a lot i'm going to learn about myself from being forced to do this again So as expected, it's continuing to uh, fold around me a lot. Um, this is a hand I'm going to open on the button, but you know, if if anything develops, I will not be continuing this time. Uh, so against button open, going to be three betting this hand. Uh, just just got to three bet. It. One that's it. That's it. That's all I got. Trevor, if he's playing a pot, he's three betting it. <laughs> I had no, I had, there was no analysis on that one. It was just, I have to three bet this hand. That's, God that's damn all, it. That's all I have. I, I, almost, I almost just didn't open because I'm like, I, I feel it coming. I can like <laughs> feel it manifesting. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, stand it open the cutoff here for me. Thirty. Um, so this hand, I don't really know. Like three bending seems really weak in this hand, but also playing out of the small blind seems just horribly weak. Uh, I remember I used to love playing this hand, but as I've played, I get into a lot of tricky spots with it. So uh, I feel like three bending or fold would be the better play. And folding seems really nitty. I feel like I just, I just really don't want to put myself in a tough spot in the small blind. So I'm just gonna be really nitty here and fold. I don't know. Uh, so we can defend here. Uh, Trevor opened in the uh, cutoff, and just like I can defend, see a flop. Uh, so this flop is not great for my hand. It's okay for my range. We're obviously going to have over pairs and. I don't have a lot of barrel opportunities with this exact hand. Um, if I have one diamond on the flop, I would definitely be betting. I kind of want to bet here because it's just going to miss so much of the big lines range also, um, but I can get check raised uh, decent frequency on this board when I have my exact hand. Um, so I'm going to check it this time. <laughs> Interesting check back by him. He's definitely got a big range advantage, although I probably have a much bigger polarity ad uh, advantage just because obviously I have more deuces than him. I do not have a club, although I have two overs and a gut shot. I just think my hand's too weak to start bluffing. It's just really easy to go crazy in this spot, I think. Uh, and when he does check back, I think uh, he is going to be pretty showdown driven and it's probably going to require firing two bullets to get him to fold ace highs or anything reasonable. So I'm just going to pretty much give up here. Jack. Uh, as I'm sitting here thinking about what I did on the flop, this shows kind of some of the rust that I have in No Limit. Uh, I think I should actually just be betting this flop 100% frequency. Now that I check back, I'm kind of in no man's land with what to do. Uh, it looks like I have a showdown type hand. I don't anticipate her uh, checking strong value here twice. Um, but I'm not really repping too much by betting turn. Um, but I'm not sure if I can pick it up on river in these spots either. I guess I can. Um, so I guess I can just check back again um, and kind of just rep some showdown value and then bluff small on rivers if it's checked me again. So I'm just going to check him. And again, this river in particular is just bad to bluff on. It's going to be very ace high dense. I have no relevant blockers and it's a very bad hand. And betting at this point would make little sense. I would probably have to go massive and it just kind of kamikaze. So I'm just going to give up. Um, so now I have to decide whether I should uh, try to bluff just to get a king high hand to fold. Uh, my hand looks like an ace high hand a lot here, so I think I can go ahead and just bet pretty small um, and hopefully get some folds out of some king high hands. Uh, I think if she were going to bluff this river, she'd go with a large sizing, um, you know, with her 10 high, 9 high type, jack high type hands. Um, she might have just given those up anyway though, so we might have the best hand anyway, but I can make a small bet here that would be like an ace high value bet uh, to try to get a king high hand to fold. So. 35. Uh, standard open here on the gun. I mean, for obvious reasons, this hand makes a good flat. Just want to set mine in position. Um, don't like to do too much flatting in this spot. Because um, I think 
the blinds are both very aggressive opponents and I'm gonna get squeezed a lot. However, Trevor opening under the gun probably gives me some protection from that because they're gonna recognize that he's got a pretty strong range um, as opposed to Landon or um, Ethan opening. So I'm just gonna call up, try to set mine, hit a deuce, and win the hand. 30. A little more tempted to actually play this one considering Marley's flat on the button. Also incentivizes me to squeeze a little bit here, but I don't have any blockers in my hand. Plays marginally okay post-flop, but I, I'm gonna stick with playing tight from the small behind and fold this one. Uh, so when Marley flats the button here, she's gonna have some Broadway type hands, um, some pairs suited aces, those type of hands. Um, I think she's gonna be three betting most of her strong value hands uh, with this lineup. Uh, this board is kind of neutral, I think. I can attack this situation a couple different ways. I can check this flop and call, uh, or I can bet small. Um, I'm going to bet small. I think she's gonna call with a lot of ace high hands as well. So uh, I think we can just start there, so. So interesting bet here. I would have um, expected him to play this spot as a pure check. This board just smashes my button flat range. Um, and if he did bet, I would have expected him to go a bit small. Um, uh, he's definitely deciding to just start polarizing himself right out here on the flop. Uh, and I do have a very strong range and infinitely better hands, however, I don't think my hands, uh, I think my hands just too good to uh, fold to one bet. So we're gonna call and proceed to the turn. Uh, not surprised to see her call in the flop. I think she's gonna continue on this board texture with most of the hands that she flatted on the button with. Uh, on the turn here, I can go a couple different ways. I can bet again for value uh, and protection versus some of those ace high and king high floats. I can check and see what develops on turn, uh, check and do some bluffs. Uh, I think the easier route is just to bet. I think it's uh, not often that you get bluff raised in this spot when I bet twice. And then I can decide what to do on some rivers. It gets a little tricky on rivers. Um, checking keeps the pot size a little bit down and I can value bet rivers on a lot of rivers, but it, al um, it also does leaves me open to uh, not protecting my hand against some of those floats. Uh, so kind of on the fence on what to do here. Um, I think I'm going to go with another bet um, because I'm going to start, I'm going to be bluffing with some hands here on the turn, that turn equity, uh, like king, queen of hearts, king, ten of hearts, uh, any of those heart draw type hands. So it might be a little thin to bet here again for value, but it feels like I have the best hand enough that I should do so. so. So obviously we're going to fold here. Um, when he continues in this turn, he's going to have some turned hearts um, and obviously, you know, some or bears, some trips. Um, we do have a heart, but it's pretty relevant blocker. It's not going to open many suited deuces. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we're going to fold. We have just better hands. Um, and this continue here is very, very strong. What's worth saying too, if you would have checked the flop, uh, definitely want to be betting my hand and can definitely check back some stronger pairs, but obviously we need more protection, so we'll bet flop if he checks. Not a hand that's in my typical construction, but uh, in the words of Trevor, I'm getting a little bit bored, and this is a hand that's going to function pretty okay uh, as a three bet. I'm a little concerned with uh, Landon not having a whole lot to say about this hand uh, before opening it, but I, I think he's just talking less for the open raises. So we're going to go for a three bet, going to go around 4x here. 125. 
Okay. There might be blood in the streets. So, I think a common mistake that people tend to make with a hand like this is they try to get all the money in as soon as possible. And while that may be true, 100 big blinds deep in some cases, like button versus small blind when the ranges are wider, in a spot like this where I'm opening very tight and his three betting range is going to be a lot tighter than if I was the button itself, this hand actually gets into calls and traps more than one might think. And the way that I normally do it is I randomize by suit and because I don't have a diamond, especially not the ace of diamonds, I'm going to play this as a call. And it's nice to have this in here because when the board does come ace king x, we are going to be able to have some very easy call downs with a hand as strong as ace king to where he doesn't just have the quote unquote ace king advantage in spots like that. So we protect ourselves on ace and king home boards. And being 200 big ones deep, I'm less incentivized to get all the money in because if I do face the five bet, it's not really the greatest thing in the world. So uh, we're just going to call here. So obviously uh, getting called was not our first plan, but uh, this board is fairly dry. Definitely favors his range and not mine. He'll have a lot more jack X in range than I will, but uh, I can have all the over pairs in my range and he probably can't. Uh, I do also have some kind of sneaky backdoors going on here. I uh, can hit a backdoor flush. I have one backdoor straight draw. So I am gonna see bet um, and I'll be taking just sort of a normal smaller size here okay he bets 85 into he bets about a third pot which is good um he's going to have some concentration of jack x for trips obviously having an ace and a king is nice because we block ace jack and king jack and specifically if we look at the suits of our hand with the ace of clubs and the, sorry, the ace of, yeah, the ace of clubs and the king of hearts, we actually don't block him from having ace jack suited and king jack suited, which is actually might be a problem on later streets because it's more likely that he does have a combo of trips and then he doesn't. This hand for sure we have to take one off because we have showdown value and we still beat some of his bluffs. And hands like ace queen are in there, some smaller pairs that we're doing well against like tens and also gonna have some ace wheel type hands. So in this spot, we do block some of his backdoor bluffs, but our hand at this point is still too good to uh, fold to a one third bet. So we're just gonna call. All right, so we get called, obviously, again, not the first plan, but the backup plan is uh, to continue to barrel on some cards where we pick up equity. This is one of those cards and also probably helps my range marginally more than helps his. Uh, I can have queens, ace, queen, king, queen in range here. Um, pick up some equity and continue betting. Um, I don't think I'm going to use a big size though because in general I'm not really like representing a jack here. I'm representing a little bit of a slightly weaker value range. So I'm going to pick a smaller size. Uh, pot was 260, both put in 85. So I'm going to go ahead and bet 150. 150. Okay, so he bets one third again, which is pretty good. This queen over card is really good for him because he is going to have hands that barrel on flop, like an ace queen, king queen, queen jack is obviously just going to be a boat. And so the higher Broadway cards are going to be better for him because he's also just going to have ace king full as a three bet. So we do pick up a gut shot and versus the sides we have to call. We also have a nice um, blocker in our hand depending on what the river is uh, with the ace of clubs because we obviously block him from being able to have enough flushes and we're still going to be able to call with our entire range of backdoor flushes on the flop. So because of that, depending on what the turn is, obviously if it doesn't improve our hand specifically, there are some turns like clubs where we kind of get to bluff depending on what he decides to do. And um, yeah, we're just gonna take it from there. So a pretty easy call for, for this size. So obviously we brick. We don't have any showdown value with this hand, so my inclination is ideally not to check. 
Uh, it's also a good card for my range because uh, a lot of my sort of like logical bluffs and logical double barrels here uh, would include an ace. Not all of them, but many of them. And he still has a lot of hands in range that would hold on for two uh, that might need to give up on this card. Hands like pocket pairs, uh, 7x. And uh, there's even some straight draws that we lose to that uh, we would basically, <laughs> we don't really want to let him win with, you know, like 10 high and hands like that. So I think that we're still going to continue betting. Uh, again, I don't think we need to use a massive size. I believe we were 430 going in that street. Uh, 300 goes in. So bot's about 730. I'm going to go for a size that's around half pot here. Okay, so here, um, I was actually thinking about what we decide to do, uh, depending on the sizing he chose, and if he decided to check. Because it's very easy to look at our hand and say, okay, we have ace-king, um, we need to value that when he checks to us, but we have to think about the combos that are going to call us in that case. So he does have some worse ace-x that would check call, like some ace-10, and some ace-wheels, depending on what they were. But because we have the ace of clubs, it's less likely he's going to be barreling the turn with ace high hands. Unless he has, obviously, a hand like ace 10 itself, which is going to be suited. Which he would 3-bet versus another the gun range because it would be a little bit too loose to 3-bet a hand like that in this environment anyways, like an ace 10 off. So in this spot, we have to think about how we wanted to bluff catch. And we're obviously just going to call based on the size he chose. And I think I would also call versus a smaller size too. And we don't really, we're basically bluff catching and we're only basically hoping he's going thin with an ace 10 suited. I'm going to lose here a lot, but this is obviously one of the better hands that we're going to have in this spot. It's pretty unfortunate that, um, now I think it's pretty good that we have the ace of clubs in our hand because it's less likely he has an ace himself because he would be barreling with ace of clubs hands on the turn. So this is going to be a call. We're going to lose a lot, but uh, sometimes we're going to win. So we're going to pay. Uh, Such a luck box. Uh, Spicy. I Who threw bet? You threw bet? He threw bet me. He came after Well, me. I didn't call. <laughs> <laughs> These young kids know how to lay the trap, you know? In the bushes. Yeah, I'm waiting in the weeds. Ace King, you got to wait till you hit. And then That's a drawing hand. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. This is the guy that just beat me. <laughs> <laughs>